Hi, my name is Alexey Konashevich, you are on Blockchain State. Today's topic is more for legal scholars, researchers and those interested in legal theory. My field of research is the use of blockchain in law and governance and at some point I came across one topic that directly relates to my efforts to create a new land registry system on blockchain. And because blockchain land registry is not just about the use of blockchain to replace the old-fashioned database technology in the land registry, but what it enables and extends in the existing land systems. Uh, due to many novelties that the blockchain brings, it appears that the current regulations in many countries cannot accommodate these innovations and therefore require new regulations. First of all, the new land registry requires some regulatory changes in the way property registration is done and the land registry is maintained. And like I said, we are not just replacing one database system with another. It has a vast potential to make its governance more efficient and bureaucracy less cumbersome. There are also a lot of things like smart contracts fractionalization of ownership, uh, new investment schemes and so on. I was thinking about methodology for analyzing current legislation and I realized that each norm should be checked against um, at least one feature. Whether a norm exists because of a specific technological paradigm or such a norm has general applicability towards any type of technology. Let me explain it. For example, in many jurisdictions you will find the norm that states that the land registry office is responsible for maintaining the registry. This is interpreted around the limits of the centralized technology, be it a paper or a centralized electronic database. A specific entity, usually a government agency, must maintain the database and its infrastructure, hardware, software which appears irrelevant to blockchain technology as it is a self-organized and self-governed infrastructure. Nobody is responsible for, for the blockchain as a kind of database. In my videos you can learn about the concept of blockchain estate registry, find links in the description. I should clarify that the government agency wouldn't be responsible for hardware. It doesn't mean that the technical protocols of the registry will not have a responsible entity. Conventionally, in this industry, such technical protocols and programs are called smart contracts. But it's not a good terminology in this case, nevertheless, leave it like that for now. With blockchain, we have a situation when the land registry office practically has nothing to do with the blockchain network infrastructure, but it has to maintain, create, manage and update the technical protocols that ensure compliance of real estate transactions. Another example is registration. In the old technological paradigm, you need a registrar. In relation to two parties of a transaction, say seller and buyer, the registrar would be a trusted third party that makes and keeps the record of the transaction. By the way, in many jurisdictions the registrar also ensures compliance. On the blockchain, users manage their records directly on the database. Blockchain is a kind of database. In the current system, you don't have access as the user, the access to the land registry system and you don't commit transaction directly on this system. On the blockchain, the transaction gets published and blockchain is an immutable repository. And hence, this registry impartially keeps the source of truth. The seller and the buyer do not need a third party to commit a transaction and to store it. What about compliance? It can be automated through standardization of smart contracts and other means. But this is a completely different topic. So my point here is that with blockchain we will need a registrar in maybe 9 of 10 transactions. For example, to resolve a dispute, to transfer inheritance and, and so on. But the current law says the registrar registers the deal. It is his function in the current system. There are no alternatives. The current technological paradigm, be it a paper registry or a centralized electronic database, cannot work without a registrar. Thus, such a norm would be obsolete for blockchain registry as new technology. 
There are many less obvious technologically related norms if we unpack the current legislation. Therefore, I make a conclusion that for the analysis of the existing norms, we should classify and distinguish first technologically versatile norms, which provide general rules required and applicable to any technology, and second, technologically specific norms, where the technology nature dictates some requirements to governance. This is an open discussion. I hope my findings will be developed in the future as I see practical use in this approach. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like, share with your colleagues, participate in the discussion and subscribe if you don't want to miss new videos. See you in the next video. There are a lot, there are also a lot of things, there are also a lot of things like, I was thinking about methodology for analyzing currently,